master the enormous challenges of the urban revolution. During the past two days, we have, in my view, learned a lot, and which is not the good news. In the future, we will have to learn even more from one another and discuss our experiences. As our cities, I think as we all agree, will continue to grow. We have just no other choice but to shape the future so that it does not crash down on us. This is because the conditions of the world we live in will depend on what city we live in. And there are moments in which, as a conference participant, one is nearly overwhelmed by what has been presented here. At our conferences, we all work on finding a platform for new forms of city governments in the urban age. If you are successful, and that is what we intend to be, then researchers, city planners, architects, NGOs, mayors, and government representatives from Asia, Europe, Africa, the Americas, and China will together develop a grammar of success for large metropolitan areas. After this conference, I'm a little bit more optimistic that this can be achieved. Let me now say thank you to all those who have contributed most. First of all, the team of the London School of Economics together with its Indian partners, the Tata Institute of Social Sciences, the University of Mumbai, and the National Institute of Urban Affairs together with the Deutsche Bank Alfred Herrhaus Society have again, I think we all agree, done an outstanding job. We thank you for this and you get a special big hand. Let me particularly thank the leadership team of the Urban Conference, Ricky Brunet, Philip Roth, Wolfgang Novak, and Ute Weiland. Thanks for all you are doing. <laughs> of course, a special thanks to all our co-chairs, speakers, and panelists who have been so engaged in the discussion during these two days.